In the movie Her, a digital assistant becomes human enough to fall in love. How far away is something like that? Not because I'm lonely or whatever, Sh just shut up. Anthony here for DNews, and Siri is probably the most recognized example of a digital assistant, but the idea of them and conversational computer programs has been around for a while. So how do we get from where we are now to a personalized, human-seeming companion? Well, the $1.3 billion Human Brain Project was started by the European Union last year as an effort to map and simulate the 83 billion neurons in our minds, and so far, they've managed about 100 million of them. Just a fraction of 1%. Just this week, Japan's K computer, the fourth most powerful supercomputer in the world, modeled one second of 1% of human brain activity, but it took 40 minutes to do it. The most aggressive estimates right now think that exascale computing, that's computing at a quintillion operations a second, which is what we think is the same as the human brain. Well, that's not going to arrive until 2018, but remember, those are the aggressively positive estimates. But maybe we don't need to model a human brain to get a human-seeming companion. One of the earliest conversational computer programs was Eliza, a text chat bot created by MIT computer scientist Joseph Weizenbaum in 1966 that was supposed to simulate a therapist. You've probably seen a lot of chat bots based on Eliza. They ask, how are you doing? And if you type, oh, I'm feeling down, it says something like, tell me why you are feeling down. They just look for specific kinds of words and phrases and parrot them back or return a matching response. They're pretty simplistic, but people reacted very strongly to something even as simple as Eliza, thinking that she showed a lot of insight and empathy. You know, we have a tendency to anthropomorphize things, put human qualities into them. So it's not a surprise that if we have the capacity to see a face in the front of a car or think our pet fish looks sad, we can empathize strongly with something that's specifically meant to seem human. Trace talked about it a little bit in the video where people were asked to go into a room and unplug a robot that was specifically programmed to beg not to be unplugged. Check it out to see the results. People had a very hard time with it. Chatbots and robot dogs and Japanese video game girlfriend simulators, they all elicit an emotional response from the people who use them. But the trick is getting to the point where the machines always seem to have a real emotional and insightful response in return. The Turing test was created by Alan Turing in 1950, and the idea is that a human interviewer asks questions of two different players that are not in the same room. One player is another human, the other is a computer, and their responses show up on monitors. At the end, the interviewer has to decide who was the human. If the computer is recognized as human, it beats the test. Now, Turing predicted that by the year 2000, 30% of all computers would be able to beat the test but it still hasn't happened. Now, Ray Kurzweil, an inventor and futurist who's one of the heads of Google X Lab, is big into the prediction of the singularity, the time when artificial intelligence becomes smarter than humans. And he thinks a computer will beat the test by 2029. Mitch Kapor, who is the co-founder of the Electronic Frontier Foundation, bet him $20,000 that it won't happen by then. And then there are people that say the Turing test is too flawed to even matter anyway. And even if a computer passes it, it still won't be able to fool us enough to really seem human. So what do you guys think? Are we going to see a computer that seems truly human in our lifetimes? I'm gonna be honest, I'm a big believer in it. I think Kurzweil's 2029 estimate seems legit. Once again, it's because I am optimistic and not lonely. Let me know what you think down below and I'll tell you whether I think you're a chat bot or not. And if you're human, subscribe for more DNews. Although you know what, if you're a computer and you're able to subscribe thousands of times a second, you can also subscribe for DNews, that would help us a lot.